Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Kubuntu 1704 which is codenamed Zesty Zappas. Kubuntu is now using the Plasma 5.9.4 desktop with a new feature backported from the Plasma 5.10 desktop which is currently in development. And that is icons on a desktop. Yeah, I can't believe I'm talking about icons on a desktop being a new feature, but no, that feature was actually removed in Plasma 5. And I saw the reason for bringing it back was because of mobile phones, that people have gotten more used to having icons on their desktop with mobiles. Yeah, reasonable enough, I guess. So you can either click on the folder, which will open it up in Dolphin, or if it was an application, it will launch it. But the other option with folders, if you click on this little indicator on the left-hand side, it will open up this view here which if you then hover over another folder, it'll open that up. So I can hover over them and then open up a file and that'll open it, well in this case is a music file, so it'll open in Amrock, which is minimized here on the bottom right hand side. So the file was actually playing already and still seems to be playing, <laughs> stop playing. With the layout of the desktop, we have the application launcher on the bottom left hand side and I can navigate around the applications or you can search for documents on here. So uh, let's try and open up that file there. So let, let it rock, there's a few down the list. Next we have the applications which are currently open. Then on the right hand side we have, well that's the media controls, the clipboard menu, volume control, time calendar, and that hamburger menu is for adjusting the panel. The shutdown menu is actually inside the application launcher. So you have leave and then just click on that here, so yeah, it brings up the shutdown menu, you've got a few options to choose from, and suspend is included. Ha, that's a knock at GNOME there for removing suspend. The one feature that should be there is the ability to play, pause and rewind off the Amarok, just by right clicking on the application. I can mute it, I can forget the recent documents, but there's no media controls here which is strange because on KD Neon, the media controls exist. Now I'm comparing that with Clementine Media Player, but I would have thought they would be there on Amarok as well. But using the screenshot tool, you can drag and drop the screenshot straight away. You don't need to save the file and then reopen it somewhere else. So let's try and drag it on the desktop. Come on, it should work. Why is that not working? There we go, got it. I think that is called Screenshotception, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. So yes, move it to the waste bin. You don't have to ask me that again. So that behavior with the icons is certainly mimicking the Windows desktop. I don't know if that's something that should be celebrated or not. So uh, yeah, I don't like it. Get rid of it, burn it, destroy it all. There, yeah, I'll have a nice clean desktop. Thank you very much. In terms of stability, Kubuntu has been perfectly fine. Memory usage has crept up a little bit now. I've been running the desktop for a while, but yeah, actually that's crept up quite a lot really. 1.5 gig now, it's closer to about 800 meg on system boot up. Responsiveness seems reasonable enough. Just going on to the application launcher settings. We can see a little change there is new artwork, but also on the keyboard shortcuts, I can launch the application menu from just the Windows key. I know it says Alt and F1 there, but Windows key or Super key on its own will trigger the Alt and F1 shortcut. With the Alt and F2 menu, the K runner menu, that gives you another option for searching files, documents, but also a couple of other functions like, oh, I don't know, the ability to do a calculator, one, two, three, plus, yeah, do that, 264. Yeah, that's fine. You can open up browser bookmarks. And there's also a list of other available plugins. So yeah, quite a few. It is something I don't make enough use of, really. Right-clicking on the application launcher brings up alternatives, and you can choose from a couple of different styles here. So, application dashboard. And now I have a new view. Hovering over the application list there is so fast and responsive. It's brilliant. And you can also do that for the task manager as well. So, alternatives, and I can choose an icon-only task manager. Oh, and global menus are back as well, so you can have an application menu bar at the top of the screen. So much choice and flexibility with KDE. And that's barely scratching the surface of what you can do. There's more widgets you can add to the desktop. But I at least like the fact there's a lot of widgets which are actually built into the desktop. I know people say with GNOME, oh, but there's lots of widgets you can add. Yeah, I agree, there are lots of widgets you can add. 
But what happens when they become unsupported, or the developer abandons the project, or the desktop changes too much for the widget to be of any use? At least with these widgets built into the desktop, you know they're going to continue working. Looking across at the system settings, look and feel you can set between a light and a dark theme very easily, and you can download new themes easy enough as well. Looking at the application style, reminds me that GTK styling has been improved. I have to say the GTK styling is absolutely perfect and consistent throughout the desktop. So be it whether you have a GTK application open like Inkscape or Firefox, or a cute application like Kate, the menu styling and the scroll bar styling is consistent throughout. I certainly like that, because one thing that really bugs me is when you have inconsistent theming across the desktop. How many times have I complained about Unity in the past? Oh yes, quite a lot. The font choice is the no tofu font. I had to enable anti-aliasing, because by default it was disabled, so the rendering in LibreOffice looked absolutely awful. You can choose quite a few fancy effects to enable in Kwin, which is very reminiscent of Compiz. Now, Compiz is pretty much a dead end now with Unity ending. At least with KDE, you can use it under Wayland or fall back to X11. Compiz was only under X11. All I'm saying there is KDE has adapted to the future. If your system is incompatible with Wayland, for example, if you're using the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, it will fall back perfectly happily to X11. And it doesn't tell you at all, it just gets on and does the job. Some other changes on the back end which have affected all the Ubuntu 1704 derivatives that you no longer need a swap partition, it uses a swap file instead, which is limited to 5% of free disk space or 2 gig, whichever figure is smaller. And you can now use Internet Printing Protocol or Apple AirPrint printers without installing additional drivers. Supposed to be plug and play now. In terms of applications installed on the system, there's a reasonable amount really. You've got the full suite of LibreOffice, Amarok for the audio player, Dragon player for the video player, Internet, Firefox for the web browser, Kmail for the email client, and KTorrent for a torrent downloader. Graphics, I installed Inkscape as part of my testing. So in conclusion, Kubuntu 17.04 with the Plasma 5.9.4 desktop is certainly a massive step up from the older Kubuntu 16.10 and 16.04. Not only have you gained a lot of new features, but also stability has really improved. If you've tried KDE in the past and found it to be really unstable, and I'm talking anything more than say two months ago, it's definitely worth trying again, because development has really come on that quickly. Although you can always add the Kubuntu Backports repository into 1604 and get a newer KDE desktop that way. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.